Single men, what made you definitely not want a second date with a woman you went out with? Story 1. Internet dated for a while, once I went out with a girl that kept talking about her fake ID. I was 23 and she was allegedly 20, ordered wine and didn't have her ID. Got crappy with the waitress, asked me to get her a drink. By the end of the date, I wasn't sure if she was even 18. Noped out of that date fast. Invited a girl to dinner. She showed up 45 minutes late after texting me a few times to say she was on the way. But she also showed up with her friend for protection. Okay, I guess. There's a lot of weird dudes out there and I can have fun with multiple people. I ended up buying dinner for both of them because I'm a rube. The girl left after dinner because they were going out. Didn't bother inviting me, but texted me constantly looking for more dates. Cut that one off because I didn't really understand how that was supposed to work. Met a girl at a place she suggested. Cool with me, decent place, but more like a dive bar with food than a dinner place. No big deal, I like dive bars. Turns out she's a regular there and knows everyone who works there. Okay, she feels comfortable there or something. We go to leave and her car is dead. I jump it, but not before seeing that she's either living in her car or she's a hoarder. Old Cherokee with nowhere to sit besides the driver's seat. One girl kept telling me that I'm saying all the right things, but hoped I wasn't an I was able to laugh it off the first time, but after four or five, I was offended. Cut dinner off short and told her to have a good night. Luckily, I had cash and left way more than enough with the hostess. Met a girl I dated for about three weeks. First night at my place, she wanted to do it. I wasn't really ready for that with her because I really liked her. Dumb move? Maybe. Just didn't feel right yet. Told her that. She started getting rough with my junk and asked if I was a real man and how a real man would prick her brains out. It turned angry for another 15 minutes, played it off, and we talked for a while and went to bed. She texted me the next day saying she was disappointed but wanted to give me another chance. Feel like I dodged a bullet with her. She was really a cool person to talk with besides the whole peer pressuring me into intercourse and acting like I was a disappointment because I have feelings. Dated a girl who was a preschool teacher for uh, about six months until she revealed that she wanted me to act like one of her preschool students while having intercourse. Could never look at her the same way, which sucked because I couldn't dream up a more beautiful woman and the whole part where she maybe wanted to f one of her students. Had a girl for dinner. She showed up several drinks ahead of me. Drank a bottle of wine at dinner to my two drinks. Tried to drive her home and she accused me, jokingly, of trying to take advantage of her. Tried to get her a cab and she refused. Drove home plastered. I'm not trying to babysit an alcoholic. Had the rest of the stereotypes. A date for free dinner, not over a ex-boyfriend. I'm almost definitely a side piece, just looking for friends. Projecting her fears onto me or whatever she was going to try and date. Too desperate to date an engineer because of a perceived paycheck. Wants to change me before knowing me. Too cool to online date even though we met on an online dating website. Alcoholics. I drink a lot, so that's saying a lot. Intercourse addicts. That's all they ever talked about. You name it. I went on so many dates to the same place that the hostesses started keeping track. Sarah, the one I spoke with most often, saw them all. She knew when things weren't going well. She finally stepped out of her role and asked me out with her and her friends to introduce me to someone. I met one of her friends who is now my wife on that outing. The restaurant's owner is a big name in our city and we use them to plan, host, and cater our whole wedding. Funny how things work out. Honestly, I was a little worried this thread was going to be some real, uh, well, y you know the kind of guys I'm worried about. But you seem like a really reasonable person, OP. I'm only a little sorry that you had to go through that string of bad dates, but only a little because it was the journey that led you to your now wife. Congratulations on that happy ending. Story 2. I posted this somewhere else before, but it's relevant here, so I'll repeat it. So, I take this girl out to a bar or restaurant, meeting her for the first time after talking on an online dating site. After she orders her food, she drops the bomb. She tells me, for the past seven years, she has been a professional dominatrix. So I'm an open-minded guy. I'm cool with this. She probably has some funny stories, right? Well, she starts telling me these stories, and for the first half hour or so, they are pretty entertaining. Eventually, though, I want to talk about other things. However, any time I try to change the subject, she immediately brings it back to dudes she's pooped on. 
It got weird. I could barely get a word in. She basically didn't take a breath for three hours. Again, I'm a really open-minded guy, but there's only so many consecutive stories of ball gags and double-sided toy butt-freaking a person can take before even the most open-minded among us starts to feel uncomfortable. At one point, I excuse myself to go to the bathroom. As I stand up and turn around, she seizes this chance to smack my butt and says, Your butt looks like a baby pumpkin. I could bounce a quarter off it and get back two dimes and a nickel. Keep in mind, this lady is a professional. It was crisp and painful. To put this in perspective, I was wearing thick jeans. She hit me in my back pocket, and when I checked myself for damage in the bathroom, there was a clear, flat, red handprint on my butt cheek. Like, I could see the lines in her hand. I could have mooned a psychic and they would have been able to predict her future. So I'm about done with this. We finish the meal and I drive her home while she still blabs tales of donkey tail plugs and toys I've never heard of going in places I wish I hadn't heard. So I pull in her driveway. The second the car goes into park, she immediately grabs my nuts, like specifically targeted them. And it wasn't sexy. It was a hostage situation where she had all the power. Then she straight licks the side of my face, chin to hairline, her tongue as big as a Shetland pony. I do not want. She then looks me in the eyes and says menacingly, I'm gonna strap you into my intercourse dungeon. The f*** you are, I choose life, I think to myself. How do I get out of this? She literally has me by the balls here. So here's what I come up with. I tell her that, hell yeah, let's do it. I have a special toy I keep in my trunk, is that okay? She says, sure, bring any toys you want. So I tell her to meet me at her doorstep while I bust it out because I want it to be a surprise. As she steps out of the car, she gives me a look that she thinks is naughty but is actually terrifying. The second her feet touch the ground, I slam the car in reverse and fly out of her driveway as fast as my car can go. You know how most people pull out of a driveway, switch to drive, then drive off ahead? I did not do that. I didn't want that one second of switching gears to give her the chance to catch me. I pulled out of the driveway and just kept going down the street in reverse for like five blocks. The passenger door was flapping around, still open because I took off before she shut it. When I am satisfied she won't catch me, I close the door, put it in drive, and go home. Gotta get back on that horse, right? Wrong. I got home, iced my balls, and deleted my online dating profile. Not today, Satan. Look, I am a supporter of dominatrixes and BDSM if you're into that stuff, but folks, there are two key aspects to that kind of stuff which are missing from the story. Consent and communication. If you want to get into that kind of stuff or have a partner who does, but they don't want to communicate with you what you both want out of it and get consent, that is not okay. Story three. She didn't say anything. Like, there's being nervous, and then there's that. We're talking a film class together in school and agreed to go see a movie together, 50-50, that counted for extra credit. It became clear a few days beforehand that this was turning into a full-on date, and I just rolled with it. We were both single, and I thought we could have a fun night out together. I asked if we could get dinner after the movie to talk about it and get to know each other better. She seemed excited by the idea, and I was looking forward to the night. I picked her up, and she was dead silent. She was dressed to the nines for a casual date and was clearly nervous. I did my best to break the ice and run the conversation, and the best I could get out of her was a nervous chuckle and a, yep. After the movie, I asked if she still wanted dinner, and she said, absolutely, and then proceeded to watch me eat dinner while she stared at me. When I dropped her off at home, she told me she had a really nice time and hoped we could hang out outside of class again. I told her for sure, and we said goodnight. She flat out never said another word to me in class again. A year or so later, I ran into her at a party and asked her what that whole deal was about. She confessed she was so goddamn anxious that she had no clue what to do or say. Apparently, that was the first date she'd ever been on with a guy. It's a shame, too, because in class, we got along really well. I was just so put off by the silence that I didn't know how to approach her for the rest of the semester. Apparently, she is a semi-professional golfer now. I haven't heard from her in years, but I hope she's doing well out there. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 4. I went out with this girl that I knew was pretty religious, but she was still pretty cool and not like nutty level of religious. She had a couple of drinks while we went out, but I realized it wasn't going to be anything intimate or anything. I respect that. Made me like her more, if anything. 
So a couple weeks and some chatting down the road, she's been asking me to come to some event with a youth group. We're in our mid-twenties. I kind of pressed the issue and tried to make it work out, but we both ended up busy and said, you know, would you just like to go on a more serious date more than just hanging out at the local bar? She ended up kind of offended about how she was just trying to be nice to me and I was extremely inappropriate. Pretty much killed that interest. Sorry, I don't want to go on date number two to your church. As someone who used to be deeply involved in a church, now a sinful atheist, it was always weird dating anyone who wasn't a Christian. There was always a weird pressure from parents and the church about it, like, oh, she isn't a Christian, you should bring her along sometimes. Story 5. Went on a great date with an awesome lawyer chick who a mutual acquaintance introduced me to. She was 4-5 to five years older than me, so late 20s, maybe early 30s, but I didn't mind. We went to the beach and played some volleyball, then went to a local pub and just hit it off. So later she asks if I want to come back to her place for a bit, and so I do. There were pictures of her with some other dude hugging and stuff all over the place. They were obviously in a relationship. Don't know if she had just broken up with him or if she was actually still actively in a relationship, but it never came up and she basically just acted like the framed photos weren't there, lol. Decided to pursue other options, although I still wonder if I'm the weirdo for not outright asking her what the f*** is up with the pics. Feel like it's kind of on her to explain that and not my place to ask. Story 6. I arrived at her place and she told me to hop in her car as she just needed to drop something off at a friend's house real quick. It wasn't a friend, it was someone. She had an appointment to sell these hot oil infusers and their millions of scented inserts to. I sat in a stranger's home for 90 minutes while they smelled them all. She wanted to go to dinner afterwards and I asked her to please drop me off at the car so I could go home. She has a business to run. Guess it didn't even make it a whole first date. Edit. Holy c show this blew up one for everyone telling me i should have gotten an uber slash lyft this was before those things existed which wasn't all that long ago two she was selling sensi three i never knew that slash anti mlm was a thing makes sense that it is i'll have to drop by sometime and say hello story seven she spent a good chunk of the date talking about previous bad dates she had been on recently. She went into pretty good detail about the most recent one from a week prior to our date about how the guy was obnoxious, invited her back to his place despite an apparent lack of chemistry, and was having a hard time taking no for an answer, etc. I could go into more detail because I know all of them, but the whole time she was telling me about these bad dates ad nauseum, I so badly wanted to interrupt her and tell her she could add this one to the list considering she spent the whole time being negative about a bunch of other dates that had nothing to do with me. She asked me the next day if we should get another drink sometime, and I said I was pretty busy. So, no shade. You do you. If you weren't feeling it, you weren't feeling it. But folks... Some of us are bad at first dates. We will talk nonstop about the most or most inappropriate stuff endlessly unless we are steered away from it. Beyond the first few dates, we are awesome, but the first date jitters turn us into chattering fools. Feel free to let us know or give us a second chance. Story 8. I was 32. She was 25. She showed up to dinner high as a kite, dropped the word idiot several times loud enough for the people around us to hear. She then got loaded during dinner, ordered an expensive plate, and barely touched it. She also told me I'm stupid for still buying books and childish for listening to music. She also insisted I had to take her out two to three times a week, minimum. It was also implied she'd be moving in with me in the near future. She was unemployed and living at home, which honestly didn't bother me. The whole jumping into the deep end did. Twenty minutes into the date, I text my friend, Holy c***, turns out she's awful. Story 9. On a lunch date with a very attractive woman who I share a couple classes with, she mentioned that she was in the process of getting a divorce. She seemed to want to talk about it, so I indulged. When I asked why things were ending, she said, He's been cheating on me. That's heavy. How did you find out? Internet history. Pauses. Leans in and whispers. He looks at XXX. Oh, I know I smiled. Is XXX cheating? It's mental cheating, and my pastor says that's the worst kind. <laughs> oh, you're serious. Story 10. 1. Suggested we go to the nicest steakhouse in town. 2. When I assumed we would go Dutch or pay for our own she assumed I was paying because she's just old-fashioned. 3. Asked me what my debt-to-income ratio was. 
Four, upon learning I had paid off my student loans, demanded that I pay her student loans if I wanted a second date. I drove us to the venue, but I just drove home by myself after paying the bill. Go f*** yourself, Aaron, you cheap b Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.